Most of the patients that need hip replacements have uh, what we call osteoarthritis, which is wear and tear of the hip joint. Uh, it's by far the most common cause of arthritis. The most common complaint with an arthritic hip is groin pain, a thigh pain. The pain can radiate down to the knee. It can radiate into the buttock. Hip pain rarely goes below the knee. The thing that is often, often times confusing is whether someone has back problems or really has hip problems. And we see a lot of patients who come in with quote unquote hip problems that have normal hips. It's, it's really a referred pain from their lower back. A patient with a hip problem almost always will have pain in their hip when you flex your hip and internally rotate it. Obviously the most common diagnostic test is an x-ray. You can diagnose the vast majority of patients with arthritic hips with just a simple x-ray. Patients where they're not really sure or it's early and an MRI can, can sometimes help, uh, but usually you can tell from the x-rays. When we see someone in the office who needs a hip replacement, uh, at Mother Francis we have a really world-class total joint program. Patients seen in the office, decides they fail conservative treatment, need the surgery. We then, uh, of course, give them some information on our joint center or joint program, and then they have to go to a class the week before the surgery where they meet with the nurses and the therapists and they talk about what they're going to do in the hospital. And it's really been showing that a, a joint program like that results in uh, better outcomes and uh, you know fewer complications and happier patients. The night of the surgery, most patients are gotten out of bed. The day after the surgery, patients uh, start physical therapy. The whole idea is patients who've had a hip or a knee replacement is to get them out of bed and go, not to lay in bed and have problems. The sooner you get up and go, the less likely you are to have uh, blood clots in your legs or, or other complications. The average uh, hospital stay is three days. Most of the patients, uh, about 60% of our patients at least, will go home after the surgery and have, the first two weeks I usually have home physical therapy and home uh, visiting nurses. The longevity of total hips has gotten better. 30 years ago, you'd say hopefully you'll get 10 years out of a hip replacement, but now we know that uh, most hips are going to last more than 20 years, probably longer. And that is mainly because the, uh, the, the quality of the implants has improved. Recovery for a hip replacement, the ballpark recovery is six weeks. Most patients, uh, whether it's uh, a hip replacement, knee replacement, whether it was anterior, pro posterior, lateral, uh, will improve for a whole year. The thing you need to avoid uh, after a hip replacement or a knee are the high impact uh, sports, running, jogging, basketball, those kind of things. And the reason for that is that it's been shown that the joints will, won't last as long or they might wear out faster. What I tell patients after total hips is they can you know, hike, bicycle, swim, dance. You know, it's just the, the high impact uh, sports that you want to avoid. It should be at least every couple of years, especially when you uh, get out to about 10 years after your surgery. And the reason for that is that the plastic liner can wear out in the hip joint and it's asymptomatic, you don't know that it's wearing out, and that debris that's uh, released from that plastic liner can cause bone resorption around the implant, and eventually it can cause a catastrophic loosening of the implant. And so if you see that your uh, plastic liner is starting to wear out on the x-rays, or if you see that there's some bone resorption around the implant, then it's much better to uh, go in on that patient and replace that liner and bone graft any uh, defects if you need to. Uh, rather than wait for it to get loose.